I'll put it this way, the argument against theism based on the fact that God doesn't uh, heal amputees. Actually, the way I often hear it is it's an argument against answered prayer. No, God doesn't answer prayer because if he did, he'd heal amputees. So prayer doesn't work is the claim. And I think what's behind that for many offering is the prayer doesn't work because there is no God to answer the prayer. But we know that there is no God to answer the prayer because God doesn't heal amputees. All we get is these healings that, um, uh, quote, unquote, healings that could be explained in other ways. But if you want to do a real miracle, you want to see a real miracle, have God heal an amputee. And then I would believe that God answers prayer. Well, I actually have four things to say in response to that. And these are things to think about. I don't know that for anyone raising this objection, they're going to be completely satisfied with everything that I have to say here. And I think part of the reasons, and I'll, this will enter into my comments in a moment, is I think they've already made their mind up in advance. Though I think there are some people out there that might genuinely have this question, and I know Christians have been hit by this challenge, and they haven't known how to respond to it. So I'm, <clears throat> I'm going to offer some thoughts here uh, in response to the challenge that prayer doesn't work, otherwise, uh, why doesn't God heal amputees? And I, my, the first question that comes to mind here is really quite simple. What makes you think that God doesn't heal amputees? Now, I'm very interested to hear how the person raising this challenge would answer that. Notice that, as I characterized it a few moments ago, um, prayer doesn't work based on the fact that God doesn't heal amputees. What makes anyone think that that's a fact? Do you know how much knowledge you'd have to be in possession of to be able to claim that that's a fact? God doesn't heal amputees. You would have to know of every circumstance in which there was an amputee who was paid, prayed for, and in each circumstance, that amputee was never healed. That's what you would have to know. Uh, now, I don't think that there's anybody who makes this claim that is has anything like that information. They have simply assumed that God doesn't heal amputees because they have never heard that God has healed an amputee. But this, do you see how flimsy a challenge that is? Now, certainly this doesn't prove that God heals amputees. But since the challenge is that God doesn't answer prayer because he doesn't heal amputees, then it is the person who's offering the challenge that is making this remarkable claim for which they have what kind of evidence? None. That is, they can't, unless they have something like an exhaustive look on amputees and prayer applied to amputees, to know that each one has failed, they can't say that God hasn't done so. And the fact that they haven't heard about it ever happening is irrelevant, because most of the things that happen in the world, none of us have ever heard about. <laughs> the vast majority of things. And someone might say, well, don't you think that this would make it into the papers if that had happened? And, and my response is I have absolutely no confidence that that would be the case, because anybody who hears of such a thing would dismiss it. And any claim that it actually happened would be dismissed summarily by critics, just the way they dismiss virtually every other claim to a miracle. They dismiss it because it doesn't fit in their worldview. It isn't the case that they have really examined every one of these things and shown on independent evidence they haven't happened. It's because they're dismissive. By the way, if you want to assess any, if you want to have one miracle to assess in that way, work on the resurrection. Because there we've got a lot of eyewitness testimony, we've got a lot of documentation, we've got a lot of things that you could uh, dismiss and try to explain away if you like. And many people try to do so. But there's a powerful case that can be made for the resurrection of Christ based on the evidence that we have. And based on the information that virtually every credible historian, secular and, or Christian regardless, acknowledges to be the case. The, the life and death of Jesus of Nazareth on a Roman death on a Roman cross, the empty tomb, the the alleged appearances, that is the people themselves who actually believe they saw the resurrected Christ and the beginning of the early church. These are historical facts that virtually all in the in the game acknowledge. Then the question is, what is the best explanation for those facts? 
So we have plenty to work on. You know, if you really wanted to be persuaded based on evidence for a miracle, okay? So that's my first one. My first observation is the objection is based on an, is on the fact that God doesn't do this when no facts have been forthcoming. No such facts. Uh, the second thing is, um, even if he didn't choose to heal a paralytic, doesn't mean that he doesn't answer prayer. It may be that God answers all kinds of other prayers, but doesn't answer that one. Uh, what one has to do is he has to look at the individual cases where prayer has been asked or offered, and an answer has been forthcoming. <clears throat> And then make a judgment whether it's reasonable to think that this could have happened on its own without the prayer or whether the prayer is the actual cause of the thing that happened. I, I, I mean, I, that's pretty straightforward. And if you have some examples of things that, that reasonably speaking, can't be explained apart from a miracle, then uh, I think we're justified in saying that God does answer prayer. Not all prayer, maybe, but some. Third, I do not think that a miracle would actually change the mind of many of those who raise this question. Uh, as one wag put it, if you had God do what you asked him to do, like appear in front of you or do this miracle or whatever, you wouldn't go to God, you would go to a psychiatrist. You would still think there was something wrong with you, and you'd try to find some naturalistic explanation to disregard whatever evidence he puts before. So there is something else that's going on here than just kind of the even-handed search for truth. I don't think it's even-handed at all. I think in many cases, not all, but in many cases, people have already made their minds up and they're looking for reasons to dismiss God. And this, I think, is a particularly specious one. Uh, God doesn't answer prayer because he doesn't heal paralytics or rather uh, amputees. Uh, note, remember, by the way, note that when Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, it was such a powerful evidence of his messianic calling that those who were opposed to him sought not only to kill Jesus, and you can find this in John 11 and in John 12. Certainly the second fact is in John 12. They not only chose sought to kill Jesus, but they sought to kill Lazarus. They wanted to put him to death again because he was living, walking, breathing evidence of the miraculous power of Christ. So instead of being persuaded by the evidence of a risen Lazarus, they decided it's better just to get rid of the evidence and kill him, which I think is unbelievable unbelief. But it shows how far some people will go to deny the obvious. And finally, and this is an observation that C.S. Lewis has made. This is kin to my second observation here. Uh, prayer is not a mechanistic enterprise. It isn't like uh, putting quarters into a pop machine and getting a soda or a drink as a result. Um, it isn't like you just put these things in and pull the lever, and if you do all the initial things correctly, you always get this result. Um, rather, Lewis points out, what prayer is, is a request of a person to do something on your behalf, that person being God. And we know that in our requests of other persons to do things on our behalf, they don't always do it. And they have their own reasons for not complying. By the same token, God may have his reasons for not complying. And just because he doesn't comply in the case that we want him to comply in, doesn't mean he doesn't exist, doesn't mean he is incapable of complying if he wanted to, do, wanted to, and he doesn't mean that he hasn't complied by answering prayer in other circumstances. So absolutely nothing follows from the fact, if it even is a fact, that God doesn't heal amputees, except for that God didn't heal an amputee. That's the only thing that follows from it. So strictly speaking, nothing follows from it. <laughs> it's just there. If God says no to a prayer request, then he says no, okay. But you cannot draw any further conclusions about the nature of God or prayer or anything from that instance alone. I think if somebody wants to know whether, they, whether God ans answers prayer or not, he should ask people who claim to have had prayers answered. 
and then look at the circumstances. I agree that there are many things that Christians give God credit for that in principle could have been explained by other things. Fair enough. And I think if you're a skeptic, you are entitled to be dismissive of those things. I'm not saying that God did answer those things. I'm saying I understand if you're dismissive of them because you think another explanation is just as good. However, that's not true of all answered prayer. Uh, there are certain prayers, some prayers that are that are uh, prayed that the nature of which, if answered, it seems to me the best explanation is that there is a God who acted. It may be because the nature of the prayer is so specific. It has specified complexity. It has all kinds of detail that then matches up to some circumstance that happens after the prayer is prayed. And the more detail, the more unlikely these things are going to happen by chance. And, it, and there are lots of prayers that I've heard people give testimony regarding that are like this. They are complex, detailed prayers that they ask uh, in which they make a request of God, and then the complex, detailed prayer is fulfilled, answered, if you will, in exactly the way they requested it. And you get to a point where you become a little bit ludicrous, uh, you look a little ridiculous, or it becomes ludicrous to argue that, yes, this is just a complex coincidence. Because it seems at some point to take more of a leap of faith to believe that than to believe that maybe God just answered the prayer. Um, another type of prayer is the, the, not just these complex prayers, but another type is when you pray for something that is not possible to happen apart from God's intervention. Some kind of miraculous intervention. And, uh, and, and I, there are plenty of testimonies of these kinds of things as well. And to be simply dismissive, oh, well, that, that didn't really happen. Um, shows that you that, that that you are not interested in the evidence. You are just interested in hanging on to your own view, unless you have good reason to believe it didn't. Now, of course, the person who's making the claim has got to give evidence for the claim. We don't have to believe it just because of that. But a lot of times, the evidence is there. And if one is still dismissive because of that, it sounds then suspiciously like they've already made up their mind in advance. And no matter what evidence that you give them, they're still not going to believe, which is one of the points that I just made. So there are, are four things to think about uh, with regards to the challenge that God doesn't answer prayer because he doesn't heal amputees. The first being, well, I don't know that he doesn't heal amp amputees. Uh, secondly, um, even if he didn't heal amputees, it doesn't mean he doesn't answer other kinds of prayer. Third, uh, a lot of folks in this situation uh, just wouldn't believe no matter what miracle is done uh, because they've already set up their minds. And finally, keep in mind that prayer is not a me mechanical enterprise. It's something uh, in which uh, a request is made of one person um, by one person of another. And the one who we're, we're, we're requesting of, God in this case, he can just simply choose not to act. Um, that's the way those kinds of things work sometimes. Doesn't mean he won't in the future. Doesn't mean he won't in another regard. But um, that's the nature of prayer. Sometimes God simply says no. Doesn't mean prayer doesn't work.